morning, New Holland. Um, for those that are have tuned in to watch us, I pray blessings upon you. I hope that you could, uh, you will enjoy today. It's uh, the third Sunday in a row that we have not been able to have services, and uh, that's kind of a, it's been a little hard for us uh, to do that. But we um, we believe that um, we'll be ready to go uh, first Sunday of the new year. Uh, that is our hope. That is our plans. Uh, we did pretty good in 2020 with uh, avoiding COVID, but at the end of the year, it finally did come and hit a lot of us here at New Holland. Um, as far as I know, we have one in the hospital or two in the hospital, um, one that is probably having to deal with COVID. Uh, this has been a, a tough week this last week, and we pray for those that have had it that you uh, are feeling better and stronger. Uh, I got feeling a little better, and then I had to dip back down a little bit, but uh, yesterday was a great day, and I'm feeling stronger, and that's uh, feeling more like myself again. So it's uh, just something we had to walk through, something the Lord had for us. We uh, want to be wise, and we want to be very safe. Uh, we are doing the things at the church, getting ready for when we meet back together again. Um, one of the things that we know is that uh, if COVID is in the room, it doesn't live long. It, there is a point in time where uh, the COVID will die away. And so we are, in the first of the year, we're going to continue to not have midweek services until we can get over this peak that we've gone through uh, so that from Sunday to Sunday, when we come back in and start worshiping together, we know it'll be a clean place. And we have cleaned the sanctuary, uh, everything will be ready to go for when we get back together next week. So be praying for um, those that are still dealing with the effects of it. Also be praying for those that, you know, for many of us, Christmas is a wonderful time. Uh, but for some, it's a, a very difficult time, not having loved ones around them. And it can be a very lonely time. So be praying for those as well. And for all the things that God has planned for us. We're going to be looking today in Psalms chapter 11. So if you do not have your copy of the Word of God, just get up and run real quickly and find out your copy, because I want you to be able to look at it and read along with me as we look at this particular passage of Scripture. As a matter of fact, about a month ago, when we were, um, I was looking for, I think, two Sundays ago. We missed three Sundays. This is the third Sunday we missed. But I was looking for something for us to play um, since we could not do service together. And I was looking at the services that we had last year. And I don't know why, but I was looking at the different ones. And I got to the one that was between Christmas and New Year. And I looked at it. And we were planning uh, 2020 to begin with uh, the five fundamentals, or what we called our high five, the five things that we as a church thought were very important for us to do. And in the last Sunday, Sunday of uh, 2019, I made this comment, uh, basically a, a statement in passing, where this one verse in Psalms 11 that means very much to me, uh, I mentioned it, and it reminded me that we were going into 2020 looking for and expecting for God to do some great and mighty and, and amazing things. And we talked about having 2020 vision, and, and we wanted to, to do well. And the verse that... that I mentioned was in verse 3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I think in uh, this past year, we have had um, our lives exposed. We've gone through, uh, there's been a lot of political talk uh, and, and unrest. It was an election year. A lot of people were putting their hopes and dreams into this or into that. We've uh, had this health scare that we as a country have had to go through. Uh, our economy has, has had to go through a lot, uh, people with their work and, and not having to work, and, and things have been very inconvenient in 2020 because of uh, COVID-19 and, and, and a lot of those things. And we are people who like things to be kind of convenient. We want things to be easy. We want things to be uh, for us just the way that we want them. And 2020 has told us that that's not the way that it's going to be. So um, I'm going to have a little prayer. And then we're going to look at Psalms chapter 11, and I pray that it will be a blessing to you, and God will use it in a mighty way. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we thank you for the opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for the ability to be with our people in different places. And Father, we uh, think about churches being gathered together, and truly that is part of what we do as we come and we worship together and sing, we celebrate, we, we uh, have programs that help us to uh, line up and seek to do the things that you would have us to do. But Lord, we know that we are the church, we are the individuals, not just collectively, but individually. And as we uh, are together, even now, collectively, we are around your word. So Holy Spirit, come and gather us where we are and speak to us one heart at a time. Speak to us personally. Make it very direct and make it very encouraging. Father, we want to we wanna do in the coming year nothing more than what you would have us to do, but, oh Lord, nothing less. Let our focus be upon you. And Father, let this year, teach us how, Lord... This year can be our best year. And not, Lord, let that not just be words. But Lord, let us, let us hear from you and know what you want to do in our lives and in our church life. And Lord, so that we can have a, a life that honors you and blesses you. And always. And many people will be touched by that. Some we will know about, some we will not know about. But Lord, we want to live our lives unto you. So, Father, just bless this time together. Use it in a mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's look in Psalms chapter 11. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to kind of go verse by verse like I like to do. And we'll look at these uh, verses, these seven verses in Psalms 11. And then I want to uh, look in, maybe uh, talk about some of the things God may be wanting to, to teach us and tell us in the coming days. In Psalm 11, it was written by the one that we know as King David. Uh, but I want us to think about when David begot his beginning. I mean, David was born for the specific time that God had planned for him. And get, he gave him the, the family and the place that he would live, uh, the place that he would grow up, the position in his family. And to be honest, he was overlooked by his family. Even his father, Jesse, uh, did not see very much coming from David's life. And the fact that he allowed him to be the one that would be out with the sheep, the shepherd boy. And, and it's amazing to me that the one that God would love and want to use in such an amazing way was, was a shepherd. It makes me think of uh, when Jesus was uh, born to Mary in Bethlehem, right? the, the, play, the city of David. In that particular place, when it was announced by the angel, the angel came to shepherds who were taking care of their flocks out in the field. And, and most likely, they were between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Most likely, they were the shepherds that would take care of the sheep that were, uh, that were used for the sacrifice in the temple. Very important, but very neglected and, and really not seen as important. They were seen as the most overlooked or the, the most... Uh, um, just normal, blue-collar, everyday people. When people saw them, they didn't see that that job was very important. But God saw those people as very important. So he sent the angel to announce the birth of Christ to them. And, and they got to go that night, that very night, and, and walked a long distance with just torches and left the sheep behind just so they could see the new Christ, the, the, the Messiah, the, the gift of God promised and sent into the world. And I think it's, it's just amazing that those are the ones that God would announce it to. And all of the angels showed up just to be uh, a great blessing to them there. And so we understand that in our station in life, we may not see ourselves as very important, but God sees us very important. And there were some things that God wanted David, as he was being the shepherd, to learn. Some daily things that were his responsibility that he needed to do. And it shaped his character. I mean, he would not have been good at his job if there were some things that he would, he would not do every day, if he just did it kind of haphazardly and didn't think it was important. And later on, he would write the 23rd Psalm, and he would say, the Lord is my shepherd. So he learned some things from the eyes of the sheep because the, that was his responsibility. And, and he was out there doing those things every day to, that, would, that would help him in his leadership with the sheep, but later on as the king of Israel, that would, that would help him 
to lead the people well, to lead the armies well, to, to lead the government and, and teach them to be a, a government and a people that looked to God and trusted in God and believed in God. So let's learn from some of these things that he shares in Psalms 11. It begins in verse 1 by saying, In the Lord I put my trust. Now, notice he, he doesn't say, In the Lord I will put my trust. Now that's looking ahead. But the only impact that we're going to make on the things that are ahead are how we uh, let those be an impact in our life today. He said, I put my trust in God. He learned that as a young boy, as a shepherd out in the field. When the bear would come, I don't know too many people that would like to fight a bear, but that was his responsibility, and he had to be ready, and he had to trust in God to take care of him. Whatever it was, uh, the lion or, or any other of the harm that was there, he had to know what he could do to protect them. He had to know what to do to take care of them. And he learned them by, by living it out every day. So he says, this is how I live my life. In the Lord, I put my trust. I put my trust. Now, the other people, evidently, what was going on uh, at the time that David wrote Psalms 11 was uh, one of the enemies was there. And, and it seemed like a, a very... Uh, big threat because of the counselors that were around him were saying, hey, we've got to leave. We've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to run away. If we stay here, bad things are going to happen. So look what he says. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain? His counselors and those people who were supposed to be giving him wise direction were saying, you've got to go. Go to the mountains. Protect yourself. It's all about you. But the shepherd knows that it's not about him. The shepherd knows that he's got to do, that he has a responsibility. Now, that's a word that some people don't want to hear. They're okay with other people having a responsibility, but they don't want that responsibility thrust upon them. Listen, every day we need to understand that how we live that day is based upon the responsibilities that we all have. And we need to live up to those responsibilities and do them well. Do them wisely and well every day. He says, all these other people are telling me that I need to flee. But he says, look in verse 2. He says, for look, the, wick, the wicked bend their bow, that they may ready their arrows on a string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. He's saying, this is what they're telling me. They're saying, look, the, the armies are there. They've got their bows. They've got their arrows. They're ready to come against us. We need to get out of here. But notice the word, look. They were living by what you and I would know as sight, not by faith. They were looking by their, at, at the circumstances rather than looking at God and believing in God and trusting in God and, and knowing that God had them there and, and that, that God would provide and take care of them there. They were saying, you need to run for yourself. You need to go away and, 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 and take care of yourself because if you don't, all this harm is going to do. They were walking by sight instead of walking by faith. They saw the circumstances as big rather than seeing God as big. And I tell you what, I, I, I know that I have a great God and He is a wonderful God and He loves me with an everlasting love and I can trust Him. I can believe in Him. I, I can put my life in His hands no matter the circumstances. No matter the circumstances. I know that there are people that have faced the things of 2020 and they said, we've got to, we've got to take care of ourselves and, and, and look at all this. And they're hearing all the talking heads and they're, they're telling them about all the dangers that are out there. And, and we've got to shut down and we've, we've got to, the, the, what we've got to do is we've got to just go uh, hi, hibernate and take care of ourselves. And folks, you've heard me say this we need to be wise. We don't need to be foolish. We need to be wise. But we don't need to see any circumstances bigger than our God. And if there is a responsibility that God's called us to, then He knows that we're in this circumstance and He'll be with us and He will provide for us there. We do not need to be controlled by fear. And there are so many that 2020 has shown that they're living in fear. They're living in fear. 
when we need to be walking by faith. And, and I understand that in my own personal life, with the health things that I'm going through, they said for men my age, there are three things that, that would make it very hard for you if you got COVID. I had all three. I had all three. And yet, I, I just lived my life as wisely as, as I could. Did I get COVID? Yes, I did COVID. I was actually uh, seeking to help someone. And the person that I was helping actually gave me COVID. And, and, and that's okay because when I was doing that for them, I, I, I told my wife and I told everybody, I said, you do those things because you're doing them under the Lord. It's the right thing to do. And if there's a byproduct of that, God took care of me. Did I go through COVID? Yes. Was it easy? No. Uh, did, am I good? Yes. Did I learn some things? Yes. 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 You cannot live your, your life in fear because of all these things out there. There are some things that we need to trust, believe, and know, and do in our life. Look what he says here in, in verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? If, if what we're standing upon is crumbling, what are we going to do? We have nothing. But if we're standing on a good foundation then we can stand strong when the circumstances of life come. He says in verse 4, the Lord is in His holy temple. He's right where He needs to be. The place of, of righteousness and goodness. The place where God is, where we can worship Him as we point our heart towards Him. We know where He's at. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. God's watching. God knows. He knows what you're facing. He knows the depths of, the, of the, the heartache and the pain. He knows how it makes us feel. And in that moment in time, His eyes are watching us. And it says here, His eyes test the sons of men. He's allowing these things to come. I'm going to say it again. He's allowing these things to come, and He's watching us to see if we're going to stand on the foundation of Christ or if we're going to go off and do what we think is right in our own eyes. Do we have a great big God, or do we have a little God in great big circumstances? Do we have one who can provide for us and take care of us, or are we just, uh, are we just doomed, and, and God doesn't care? Oh, God cares. Verse 5, it says, The Lord tests the righteous. God is allowing these things to come upon us because it's going to expose what, what is real in our life. He's going to let this test come, the righteous ones whom He loves, so that we can see it. And, and, and if there's areas of weakness, we can acknowledge it. But in the areas of strength, that's where we need to put our focus. He says, the wicked and the ones who love violence, his soul hates. You don't have to worry about those things. He says... He says, I'll test the righteous, but, but those that are wicked, those that are not believing in me, those that are not trusting in me, those who are not walking by faith, those who are living their lives about what they think and what they want and what they believe, that's all they're going to have. And he said, those people, their, their lives are not matched up with me. And it says, the wicked ones and the ones who love violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked, he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be their portion of their cup. Uh, one day this past week, my goodness, it rained. And, and it just rained, and it rained, and it rained. I believe that was Thursday, was it not? And it just rained, and, and, and it was just pouring down. Could you imagine if those raindrops were coals of fire and brimstone pouring down? Now look at this. God is on His throne as heaven. His, his eyes are on us. He wants to bless us. And He's testing us for our own good. But those that are not trusting in Him, He's going to pour down coals upon them like rain, fire, brimstone will be their portion. Those are words that sound very much like what Jesus talked about when He talked about hell. Gehenna, the, fate, the, the place of the forever for the unbeliever where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not what I want. And I want to live my life for that. If there's a choice of letting my life be lined up with the will of God and belief and trust and, and doing His ways, 
or following a way of broken foundations, of that which is temporal, that which will not last, I don't want my life to be about that. Live today, gone tomorrow, no effect. I want to live my life every day doing the daily disciplines, making the decisions that matter, that are God-based, to where God can look at me and pour out His blessings upon me in my life. Here's what it says in verse 7. The Lord, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. His presence, His glory, His hand of blessing and anointing is going to be there for those who are positioning themselves who are placing themselves in a place where God can bless them and honor them by the choices that they make of seeing God, loving God, trusting in God, choosing God. You know, I don't believe 2020 did anything to us to, as believers except reveal what was already there. Uh, my wife sells real estate now. She's doing a real good job at it. And, and she'll find a a client, I think she's doing well because she's, she's putting her client first and she's trying to do everything for them. And, and so when a client finds a house, I mean, they look at it and they'll say, well, I like the location of it. Uh, I like uh, how the house looks. I like the rooms in it. It has all this kind of stuff. But they're just giving it a, a, a look and they're, they're not too sure if it's everything. And one of the things that's very popular now, I think it's very wise, is they get uh, professionals to come in, they're called house inspectors. And they look at the house from every angle. I mean, when we look at it, when we walk into a place, we'll say, I, I like this, this looks nice. But we don't know what the foundation looks like. We don't, we, we're not trained to look at the things that may cause problems down the line. Problems that are already there. And, and we need, as believers in Christ, listen to me now, to listen to the great home inspector of our soul, the Holy Spirit of God. Because He knows everything about us. And we need to let the Holy Spirit come in and say, here's a problem. Here's an issue. Here's something that, that is of great strength in your life. This is what you need to be focusing on. You see, I believe that if you, if you look at everything, you're going to know what the weaknesses are. And when you find those weaknesses, do not ignore it, okay? Acknowledge it. But don't put all your focus there. Don't put all your focus there. In 2020, every year, we, we finish a year and we have resolutions for the coming year. And we say, hey, in the coming year, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lose all this weight or I'm going to go to the gym every day and I'm going to get in shape or I'm going to change my diet and I'm going to change my exercise, and I'm going to change how I do work, and I'm going to change how I do all these things at home. And, and we have all these things, and we say, this, this is so bad, but in the coming year, I'm going to make them all good. And the deal is, is those things just don't last, do they? We make all these resolutions, and we're putting all of our focus on, on the negative. Now listen to me now. Understand, if there's a weakness, acknowledge it. Don't ignore it. And be open for change in that area of your life. But can I say that I think that we need to put our focus not just on our weaknesses, but on our strengths? There is the 80-20 rule, and most people talk about the 80-20 rule. They say 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. All right? And that, that means 20% of the work is done by 80% of the people. That means... Uh, uh, they're not getting as much accomplished because there's all these other things in their life that are distractions for them. But th this 20%, they're getting 80% of it done because that's their focus. And I just want you to know, if I put 95% of my focus on the, on the areas of my weakness, I'm still not going to get very much accomplished. I need to not ignore it. I need to be open. But, but I think great things happen when people put a lot of their focus on their strengths. Now, in our walk with God, we need, to, we need to know and understand that there's some things that God's promised us. There's some, we, we need to make good decisions 
in the coming year. And, and we need to have spiritual disciplines in the coming year. Because we want 2021 to be an outstanding year. We want great things to be accomplished, okay? But the only way I can change tomorrow is how it affects my today. You see, I can only live in the right now. I can't, I can't go back and change yesterday. But where I am today is based on the disciplines and the decisions that I made yesterday. And when I made bad decisions, and I did not live the spiritual disciplines that God wanted me to live, then I find myself in a weaker condition today. But there's some areas in my life that God wants them to be strengths. And I need to listen to Him and make good decisions today. And I, and I make those good decisions by, by following the things that Jesus says that I need in my life every day. I can only meet God in the right now. One day, we're going to heaven. And when we get to heaven, we're going to be in what the Bible calls eternity. eternity. We have eternal life. That means that the clock doesn't tick. That means we are always in present tense, as God is in present tense. Ten trillion years ago, God was in present tense. Ten trillion years from now, if we were counted by time, God will be in present tense. Because God is always in the right now. Listen to me. We can only hear from God in the right now. We can look back on mistakes, but, but we make those changes and hear from Him in the right now. Right? We can only change our tomorrows. And we can shape our tomorrows. We can shape our tomorrows. But we can only change that and shape that by the decisions that we make today. So our focus needs to be in walking with God, believing God, trusting God, doing the things that Jesus did every day. That's, that's where our focus is going to be so that we can make them part of our lives today. We need to shape our tomorrow, right? So all of the joys and the hardships that come in life are, are based on uh, the good things we did yesterday and the bad things we did yesterday. So the wisest thing we can do is to make sure our today is everything that God would have it to be. And I think most of the time people underestimate today and we overestimate tomorrow. I think most of the time we're saying, you know what, well, I'm going to do all this in the future and, 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 and we're going we're gonna to make this decision and that decision and here's the goal and all these things are going to happen in the future, but, but we look at today and say, well, yeah, I don't have to do that right now. I can do that later. Uh, I don't have time to do that now. Um, and, and really, it may not be that important. Um, we, we, we talk about wasting time. Well, really, it's wasting the opportunity because we're all given the same amount of seconds, right? And, and please hear this. Minutes, hours, are a progression of seconds. We meet God in the right now. What we do in this point, right now, not five minutes from now, not ten minutes from now, not, not an hour from now, not, not tomorrow, not, not next month. If, if we're always pushing to tomorrow later and we're not doing those things in the right now, then it's never going to be any culmination of this building blocks and this strong foundation of Christ that we need to do. That's where we need to put our focus it is on the, the foundational things that God wants us to do, not procrastinate, but do right now. I think we overestimate what we're going to have tomorrow, and I think we underestimate the resources that God's given us right now, what we can do right now, how we can actually shape something and build something right now. How God, in a, in a matter of a second or a moment, can change something in us that will have a, a lasting and an eternal effect. And I think we need to look at the life of Christ. That's what I want us to do in, in the beginning part of 2021 is, is we're going to be looking in the life of Christ and how He did what He did because that's the model we need to follow. And, and if I was God and I was going to impact the world, I would not have done things the way that Christ uh, did them, how God led Christ. And aren't you glad He did it His way, not my way? 
I mean, but, but think about it. If, if I was going to make an impact upon man, I would have sent Christ probably every generation, right, so that they could see and know. But once again, that's living by sight, and that's where we want to be. We, uh, in our human spirit, we want to live by sight instead of walking by faith and trusting in Him. But, but God sent Him at a, at a particular point in history to a particular place, not, not the greatest of places. It was a very, uh, it was a very we would say, a, an unassuming place to a, a little virgin girl and a, and a carpenter uh, stepdad. And they would live a very humble life. He didn't send them to royalty. And he wasn't worried about resources. He didn't send them uh, to be surrounded by all these money managers and all these people who, who had all these great marketing ideas. No, he, he didn't send them to that. As a matter of fact, in the first 30 years, we, we really don't hear much about the life of Christ. But I, I promise you this, every day, like King David was when he was a shepherd boy out in the fields, every day he was doing those things that God would have him to do. Every day. And it was a culmination in his life that got him ready for the ministry. The ministry was only three and a half years long. But everything changed during that short time. And if it was me, I, I would have got him out there talking to all the mass groups of people. There was actually a place built on the Mediterranean coast by Herod the Great. He did it for the Romans. He wanted the, the Romans to know that he was thankful that they had let him be a, a governor and king in that area. And so he built them a place there in Caesarea Philippi, and in that area, he built an amphitheater that would seat about 4,000 people. And a person could speak, and all 4,000 people could hear. But you know, not one time in Scripture, not one time, not one time does it ever tell us that Jesus went to get that one particular place where he could talk to all those people at once. Not once. I mean, if you look at the model, model of a lot of churches today, it's let's build it as big as we can, let's get all the buildings together so we can do everything in an hour or two a week and we can impact eternity by the big numbers of people that we can all bring in together and, and just in this one short amount of time. I mean, if we were using, uh, if Jesus were using that model, he would have probably went down to Caesarea Philippi, a uh, very popular place, and he'd have probably had six or seven meetings a day of 4,000 people. That's not how he did it. He got up every day, spent time with God. As the Bible says, as was his custom. Okay? He spent time with God. Jesus prayed. Jesus would, would, would walk out the living word of God. He knew the word, and he put those principles and those precepts into his every day. And there were spiritual disciplines that I think we're going to we're going to look at it in the coming year. I've got 12. I don't know how many there really are, but I'm going to mention them to us because we see them in the life of Christ that he practiced every day. And if he met one person, he ministered to that one person. If there was 12 of his disciples, he ministered to them. If there was 30 or 40 that were with him that day, he ministered to them. At that particular point in time, he shared what was needed. As they were walking through their day, if they saw something that he knew it was from God, God had it planned, and he he, he lived in the moment, and he did what was appropriate in that moment, in that circumstance at that time. Sometimes he would speak to hundreds or thousands, one time almost up to 20,000. But sometimes he was just ministering in a boat with disciples where there was probably only about six of them in the boat. Which were the most important? Just the ones with the big crowds? Or maybe it was the time up on the mountain when he was by himself with God. Maybe it was when he met the leper and did business one-on-one -on -one with him. Could we say that any of those were not important? All of them were important. He got up every day and lived those disciplines and, and made those godly decisions. In John chapter 5, y'all have heard me talk about this verse before. I think it's a great verse, but he says, in verse 31, John 5, 31, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. If I talk about myself, then, then I'm bragging about myself, and, and that's not really important. I don't talk about myself. He says, there is another who bears witness of me, 
And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. We don't need to put our agenda up there. We just need to be tied in with his agenda, doing things his way, and the Holy Spirit will add, to, add the profit to it as is necessary. Now, I used verse 31 and verse 32 there, and I shared those. But let me go back to verse 30 and tell you uh, the, the preceding verse because I think there's a great truth here. He says these words. Please hear these. Please hear these. Holy Spirit bless. I can of myself do nothing. Christ is saying that. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. When I hear God, when I'm listening to God, when, that's the decisions I'm going to make. I'm going to enact them in my life. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. I, I seek to make the decisions that God would have for me to make. We're going to need to be in His Word if we're going to know those things. We're going to need to have the daily disciplines of prayer. And, and all those 12 disciplines that we're going to talk about, that Jesus made a very big part of His life, he got up every day and he lined himself up with God. He matched himself up with God because he wanted to show the true value of what was important. These daily disciplines, these daily uh, decisions that we make, we do not need to follow the pattern of those people that are far from God. We do not need to, to talk about, well, the world says this is what is wise. We just need to line up every day with the simplicity of the things that God's placed before us to do. Now some of these disciplines that we're going to follow and we're going to seek to, to let them be the most important part of our life, we're not going to know that that particular discipline is what we're going to need that day. But as we line ourselves up with God and that circumstance arises, then we'll have it and we'll be ready and we'll trust God and we'll use it and we'll hear from God and the Holy Spirit will meet us there and, and produce whatever needs to be produced in our life that day. None of us are smart enough to know what the day is going to hold before when we get up early in the morning. But if we line ourselves up with the one who already knows our days, who already knows what we're going to face, who already knows what needs to happen, who already knows what's going to occur, then we'll be ready to face them. There is pain. There is pain in these disciplines, self-discipline, to, to line ourselves up with the Word of God. But there's also the blessing that comes from the, the daily progress that the Holy Spirit makes in our life. But there is pain in the self-discipline, but it's always worth it. But I also want to tell you there's also pain in regret. And when I look at my life and I look at the place in my past where I did not have those godly decisions and godly disciplines, and where I am today is based on where I, what I did in the past and those, those choices that I made. And, and I look and I say, I need to face and, and focus on the strengths of what God wants to do in my life and then allow him to build in my future based upon how he's working in my right now. So this is what I want you to do. This is the homework. Uh, literally, none of this is going to start in a church as a whole until, Lord willing, we meet next Sunday together. And we're going to start this new year off and, and walking these things out. We're going to learn them together. I don't want a series of sermons. I want a time where we can just hear from God and be open to the work that God wants to do in our life. So here's the whole homework. I want you to start thinking back about the past year. I want you to start taking an inventory of your life, uh, looking on the foundation, because if the foundation is destroyed, what are the righteous going to do? I want you to look at where you are in those disciplines of your life. I want you to start thinking of those things in your life now that you're doing in discipline with God. Are you doing them regularly? Are you listening to God? Are you, are you preparing yourself and putting yourself in a place for God to bless you? Are you handcuffing God, tying God's hands behind His back where He can't touch you and anoint you and bless you because you're not lining yourself up with Him? Everyone who is a believer 
We talk about being a disciple. We talk about being a follower of Christ. Everyone who is a believer can do these things. God will, I promise you, He promised that He could do these things in our life. He wants to do these things in our life. So let's just, just start taking inventory. Where are you weak? Know those areas. Acknowledge those areas. But what are the strengths of what God wants to do in you, personally in you? And you know that He has those things for you. And He promised it that He'll meet you there. Just start thinking about those things. Start looking at your moments. Start looking at your right now. What is it God's doing? God's going to do a great work. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We, we bless you and we thank you. And we're looking forward to growth in the coming year because of the growth that you're going to do in our every day. Father, help us not just pray about you coming and joining us, but may our prayer be, God, may we join you today in our right now. May we line our life up with you so that you can honor, so that you can bless Jesus Christ in us and in the world through your work in us. May we, we cannot do anything of ourselves. We can only do what you've called us and sent us here to do. Thank you, O oh God, for the call. Thank you, O oh God, for the blessing. Thank you, O oh God, for forgiveness. And thank you, O oh God, for your anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. May God bless you.